everyone, Miss Smith here for your last home learning video of the week for English. Today is Friday the 26th of February 2021. So far this week we've been introduced to the uh, author Roald Dahl and we've looked at some of the different books that he has written such as The Enormous Crocodile, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Matilda and Fantastic Mix Mr Fox. We've then gone on to think about George's Marvelous Medicine, what it might be about, using the information from the blurb to help us, and we had a go at creating a plan for what we would include in our own special medicine. We've moved on to reading chapter one and chapter two of George's Marvelous Medicine. We've been introduced to Grandma, and we thought about her personality and her appearance and how we could use noun phrases, metaphors, and similes to describe her. Yesterday, you were introduced to rhyming couplets and we looked at examples of how Roald Dahl has used rhyming couplets in his own work before we had a go at filling in some blank spaces on our own rhyming couplet. So today we're going to be putting together all of the things that we have learned so far about chapter one and chapter two of George's Marvelous Medicine. So today we're going to be answering comprehension questions. Answering a comprehension question means that you show an understanding of what you have read so far. And you don't just show an understanding from having read it a little bit, you understand it deeply. You understand why the author chose these characters and what the author was trying to portray. So today, how to answer comprehension questions, we're going to be able to read a text, we're going to find the, a question in a text and highlight the key information, and we're going to make sure we answer in full sentence. So to help us be successful when reading um, a book and answering comprehension questions about it, the first thing we need to do is reread the information that we have looked at so far. So far, we've read chapters one and two of George's Marvelous Medicine, so they will be the chapters that we are demonstrating our comprehension skills for. You will also have seen that some of the teaching assistants have recorded themselves reading George's Marvelous Medicine, so you'll be able to listen to them reading chapters one and two, and you've got both copies included in your home learning this week that you can read as well. So I'm going to start by reading chapter one and chapter two to you. This first chapter is called Grandma. I'm going shopping in the village, George's mother said to George on Saturday morning. So be a good boy and don't get up to mischief. This was a silly thing to say to a small boy at any time. It immediately made him wonder what sort of mischief he might get up to. And don't forget to give grandma her medicine at 11 o'clock, the mother said. Then out she went, closing the back door behind her. Grandma, who was dozing in the chair by the window, opened one wicked little eye and said, Now, you heard what your mother said, George. Don't forget my medicine. No, Grandma, George said. And just try to behave yourself for once while she's away. Yes, Grandma, George said. George was bored to tears. He didn't have a brother or a sister. His father was a farmer and the farm he lived on was miles from anywhere. So there were never any children to play with. He was tired of staring at pigs and hens and cows and sheep. He was especially tired of having to live in the same house as that grizzly old grand grandin of a grandma. Looking after her all by himself was hardly the most exciting way to spend a Saturday morning. You can make me a nice cup of tea for a start, Grandma said to George. That'll keep you out of mischief for a few minutes. Yes, Grandma, George said. George couldn't help disliking Grandma. She was a selfish, grumpy old woman. She had pale brown teeth and a small, puckered up mouth like a dog's bottom. How many sugar in your tea today, Grandma? George asked her. One spoon, she said, and no milk. Most grandmas are lovely, kind, helpful old ladies, but not this one. She spent all day and every day sitting in her chair by the window. And she was always complaining, grousing, grouching, grumbling, griping about something or other. Never once, even on her best days, had she smiled at George and said, Well, how are you this morning, George? Or why don't you and I have a game of snakes and ladders? Or how was school today? She didn't seem to care about other people, only about herself. She was a miserable old grouch. George went into the kitchen and made Grandma a tea with a tea bag. He put one spoon of sugar in it and no milk. He stirred the sugar well and carried the cup into the living room. Grandma zipped the tea. It's not sweet enough, she said. Put more sugar in it. 
George took the cup back to the kitchen and added another spoonful of sugar. He stirred it again and carried it carefully into Grandma. Where's the saucer? she said. I won't have a cup without a saucer. George fetched her a saucer. And there's an illustration there of George, Grandma, with her cup and her saucer. What about a teaspoon, if you please? I've stirred it for you, Grandma. I stirred it well. I'll stir my own tea, thank you very much, she said. Fetch me a teaspoon. George fetched her a teaspoon. When George's mother or father were home, Grandma never ordered George about like this. It was only when she had him on her own that she began treating him badly. You know what's the matter with you? The old woman said, staring at George over the rim of the teacup with those big, bright, wicked little eyes. You're growing too fast. Boys who grow too fast become stupid and lazy. But I can't help it if I'm growing fast, Grandma, George said. Of course you can, she snapped. Growing's a nasty, childish habit. But you have to grow, Grandma. If we didn't grow, we'd never be grown-ups. Rubbish, boy, rubbish, she said. Look at me, am I growing? Certainly not. But you did once, Grandma. Only very little, the woman answered. I gave up growing when I was small along with all the other nasty childish habits like laziness and disobedience and greed and sloppiness and untidiness and stupidity. You haven't given up any of those things, have you? I'm still only a little boy, Grandma. You're eight years old, she snorted. That's old enough to know better. If you don't stop growing soon, it'll be too late. Too late for what, Grandma? It's ridiculous, she went on. You're nearly as tall as me already. George took a good look at Grandma. She was certainly a very tiny person. Her legs were so short she had to have a footstool to put her feet on, and her head only came halfway up the back of the armchair. Daddy says it's fine to be tall, George said. Don't listen to your daddy, Grandma said. Listen to me. But how do I stop myself growing, George asked her. Eat less chocolate, Grandma said. Does chocolate make you grow? It makes you grow the wrong way, she snapped, up instead of down. Grandma sipped some tea but never took her eyes from the little boy who stood before her. Never grow up, she said, always down. Yes, Grandma, and stop eating chocolate. Eat cabbage instead. Cabbage? Oh no, I don't like cabbage, George said. It's not what you like or what you don't like, Grandma snapped. It's what good for you that counts. From now on, you must eat cabbage three times a day and mountains and mountains of cabbage. And if it's got caterpillars in it, oh, so much better. Ouch, George said. Caterpillars give you brains, the old woman said. Mummy washes them down the sink, George said. And there's a photo there of Grandma in her armchair, leaning forward towards George. And George is bending backwards because he really doesn't want to hear the awful things that Grandma's saying. Mummy's as stupid as you are, Grandma said. Cabbage doesn't taste of anything without a few boiled caterpillars in it. Slugs too. Not slugs, George cried. I couldn't eat slugs. Whenever I see a live slug on a piece of lettuce, Grandma said, I gobble it up quick before it crawls away. Delicious. She squeezed her lips together tight so that her mouth became a tiny wrinkled hole. Delicious, she said again. Worms and slugs and beetly bugs, you don't know what's good for you. You're joking, Grandma. I never joke, she said. Beetles are perhaps the best of all, they go crunch. Grandma, that's beastly. The old hag grinned, showing those pale brown teeth. Sometimes, if you're really lucky, she said, you get a beetle inside the stem of a stick of celery. That's what I like. Grandma, how could you? You find all sorts of nice things in sticks of raw celery, the old woman went on. Sometimes it's earwigs. I don't want to hear about it, said George. A big fat earwig is very tasty, Grandma said, licking her lips. But you've got to be very quick, my dear. When you put one of those in your mouth, it has a pair of sharp nippers on its back end. And if it grabs your tongue with those, it never lets go. So you've got to bite the earwig first, chop, 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 before it bites you. George started edging towards the door. He wanted to get as far away as possible from this filthy old woman. You're trying to get away from me, aren't you? She said, pointing a finger straight at George's face. You're trying to get away from Grandma. Little George stood by the door, staring at the old hag in the chair. She stared back at him. 
Could it be George wondered that she was a witch? He had always thought witches were only in fairy tales, but now he wasn't so sure. Come closer to me, little boy, she said, beckoning him with a horny finger. Come closer to me and I will tell you secrets. George didn't move. Grandma didn't move either. I know a great many secrets, she said, and suddenly she smiled. It was a thin, icy smile, the kind a snake might make just before it bites you. Come over here to Grandma and she'll whisper secrets to you. George took a step backwards, edging closer to the door. You mustn't be frightened of your old Grandma, she said, smiling that icy smile. Grand George took another step backwards, and there's Grandma leaning into George. Some of us, she said, and all at once she was leaning forward in her chair and whispering the throaty sort of voice George had never heard her use before. Some of us, she said, have magic powers that can twist the creatures of this earth into wondrous shapes. A tingle of electricity flashed down the length of George's spine. He began to feel frightened. Some of us, the old woman went on, have fire on our tongues and sparks in our belly and wizardry at the tips of our fingers. Some of us know secrets that would make your hair stand up straight on end and your eyes pop out of their sockets. George wanted to run away, but his feet seemed stuck to the floor. We know how to make your nails drop off and teeth grow out of your fingers instead. George began to tremble. It was her face that frightened him most of all. The frosty smile, the brilliant, unblinking eyes. We know how you wake up in the morning with a long tail coming out from behind you. Grandma, he cried out. Stop! We know secrets, my dear about dark places where dark things live and squirm and sliver all over each other. George made a dive for the door. It doesn't matter how far you run, he heard her saying, you won't ever get away. George ran into the kitchen, slamming the door behind him, and there's George in the kitchen. Okay, the next chapter I'm going to read with you is chapter two, which is The Marvellous Plan. George sat himself at the table in the kitchen. He was shaking a little. Oh, how he hated Grandma. He really hated that horrid old witchy woman. And all of a sudden, he had a tremendous urge to do something about her. Something whopping, something absolutely terrific, a real shocker, a sort of explosion. He wanted to blow away the witchy smell that hung about her in the next room. He may have only been eight years old, but he was a brave little boy. He was ready to take this old woman on. I'm not going to be frightened by her, he said softly to himself. But he was frightened, and that's why he wanted suddenly to explode her away. Well, not quite away, but he did want to shake the old woman up a bit. Very well, then. What should it be? This whopping, terrific, exploding shocker for Grandma. He would have liked to put a firework banger under her chair, but he didn't have one. He would have liked to put a long green snake down the back of her dress, but he didn't have a long green snake. And there's a picture of George. And the illustration shows that he's got that idea for an explosion in his head and some of the different things that he'd like to do to Grandma. He would have liked to put six big black rats in the room with her and lock the door, but he didn't have six big black rats. As George sat there pondering this interesting problem, his eyes fell upon the bottle of Grandma's brown medicine standing on the sideboard. Rotten stuff it seemed to be. Four times a day, a large spoonful of it was shoveled into her mouth, and it didn't do her the slightest bit of good. She was always just as horrid after she'd had it as she'd been before. The whole point of medicine, surely, was to make a person better. If it didn't do that, then it was quite useless. So, oh, thought George suddenly, aha, uh -huh, mm-hmm, he knew exactly what to do. I shall make her a new medicine, one that is so strong and so fierce and so fantastic it will either cure her completely or blow off the top of her head. I'll make a magic medicine, a medicine no doctor in the world has ever made before. George looked at the kitchen clock. It said five past ten. There was nearly an hour left before Grandma's next dose at eleven. Here we go then, cried George, jumping up from the table. A magic medicine it shall be. And there's a picture of George and he's looking very excited now because he's had his terrific idea. So give me a bug and a jumping flea. Give me two snails and a lizard three. And a slimy squiggler from the sea. And the poisonous sting of a bumblebee. And the juice from the fruit of the jubu tree. And the powered bone of a wombat's knee. And one hundred other things as well, each with a rather nasty smell. I'll stir them up, I'll boil them long. A mixture tough, a mixture strong. And then hi-ho and down it goes. A nice big spoonful, hold your nose. Just gulp it down and have no fear. How do you like? 
like it, Granny dear? Will she go pop? Will she explode? Will she go flying down the road? Will she go puff in a puff of smoke, start fizzing like a can of coke? Who knows? Not I. Let's wait and see. I'm glad it's neither you nor me. Oh, Grandma, if only you knew what I have got in store for you. So that poem there, it's very similar to when we started to think of our own medicine on Monday and we thought about the ingredients that we would include, the purpose of our method, and our purpose of our medicine and the method, how it would all be put together. OK, so now we've completed step one because we have reread chapters one and two together. Remember as well, you can listen to the videos of our teaching assistants reading those and you've got a copy included in your home learning for this week. When answering a comprehension question, the second important thing that you need to do is to read the question carefully. Sometimes you might need to read it more than once. This question says, at the start of the story, where was grandma dozing? When I'm trying to answer a question like this, these are the types of things that you need to think about. Well, what does this question mean? What information are you being asked to find? What is it that you need to do and where can you find it? So to do this, you'd look back through your copy of um, George's Marvellous Medicine and you'd identify that key piece of information and by following all of those steps I've been able to find the answer in this chapter it says grandma who was dozing so dozing is our key word because in that question it asks us where grandma was dozing grandma who was dozing in her chair by the window so for this question I would answer it by saying grandma was dozing in her chair by the window I've answered it in a full sentence so for step three, you're finding that key information and it's the same question there again at the start of the story, where was grandma dozing? So you can find key information by finding the part of the story which the question is about. So once you've read the story, think back to it and think, OK, was that event in the beginning, the middle or the end part of the chapter? And sometimes you might like to highlight or you might like to underline the key information in the question so you know exactly what you need to be looking for. And sometimes questions will even give you clues, let's say chapter one or chapter two. And here's an example of how that key information can help you find the correct answer. Here's the start of the story. We've been introduced to grandma. Grandma's there and dozing. So they're both the two key words that are mentioned in that question. So it's about the right sort of place to be looking for the answer. And step five, something I reminded you of earlier, make sure that you write your answer in a full sentence. If somebody walked in the classroom and they picked up their book, we want to make sure that it makes sense for them to read and for them to know exactly what it is that you were speaking about. So here is a reminder of the five steps that are really important to think about when answering comprehension questions. Step one, re in this case, read chapters one and two. Step two, read the question. Step three, find the key information. Step four, use the key information to find your answer. And step five, record your answer in full sentences. So if when you go off to do your comprehension activity, you forget any of those steps, you can pause the video here at 18 minutes and remind yourself of what it is that you need to be doing. So when you've finished answering your comprehensions, just questions, just go through and check some of these things. Have you remembered capital letters, full stops? Do your sentences make sense on their own? So if somebody picked up your book and read it, would your sentences make sense? A great way to test this is to read it out loud and listen carefully and check that you haven't accidentally written the same word twice or you haven't accidentally missed any important information. And also check if your sentences start with because. We don't just want to answer a question with because, we need to add a little bit of information before so we know what question you are answering. Here are your comprehension questions for George's Marvellous Medicine. The first four are for chapter one, Grandma. The first question says, at the start of the story, where was Grandma dozing? And we've already answered that one together. We were able to answer it by finding the key information, which was looking for those two words, Grandma and dozing. So I'm going to answer this one. So I've put my answer to that question in red so you can see I've answered number one there. And I've answered that by finding the key information in the story and putting it in a full sentence. Your second question says, how much sugar did grandma have in her tea? Number three, according to grandma, oh, let's move that down. Number three, according to grandma, what makes you grow the wrong way? And number four, when George began to tremble, what was it that frightened him most of all? Then you're answering comprehension questions for chapter two. This is called the marvellous plan. Number one, how did George feel about grandma? Number two, how old is George? 
Number three, what did George decide to make? Why did George decide to make grandma a new medicine? And number four, name two items George planned to add to the medicine. So you've got some really great clues here to help you. It tells you when you need to be answering questions from chapter one. It tells you when you need to be answering questions from chapter two as well. Remind yourself of those important rules to remember to be successful when answering comprehension questions. If you need a reminder of what happens in the story, you've got your copy of George's Mother's Medicine, chapter one and two, that was provided with your home learning this weekend. I've read them all to you as well, and there are videos of the teaching assistants reading them in school as well. If you've got any questions, please let us know. We hope you're enjoying um, this Roll Doll book. Have a lovely weekend and we'll speak to you again soon. See you later. Bye.